Hey everybody, it's me, Steve, the creator of the channel. I'm the guy responsible for MediaWiz, Blockbuster Show, Captivating Christian, MC Swigga, Pony Fanboy, Sidekicks, everything on this channel, basically. And uh, this is this year's channel anniversary, and it's just sort of an update uh, as to a certain project I've been working on, and just kind of kicking around, spitballing with a couple other creators, and... Uh, I'm not sure if I'll have it ready for next year, but it's just something I wanted to pitch to people and see if they'd be interested and maybe even suggest a couple of ideas for this one. Because uh, I have a couple key ideas for it, but I'm still actually working it out. Like I, I haven't even gotten into the, the full-on writing process and the dialogue stages yet. It's mostly in the conceptual stage at this point. So basically, uh, what I wanted to do is a kind of a mini-movie for the fanboys and the fangirls of Planet Goofball. I want to do sort of a special event kind of thing. Maybe like five-part mini-series uh, or a mini-movie. I was thinking more breaking it up into certain parts. So maybe that would be an interesting idea to go with. But um, the overall plot, I wanted to have all the main fanboys and fangirls, the four main ones, the uh, PPG, KP, MLATR, and Pony fanboys and fangirls, end up getting sucked into their own respective franchises and from there you have some kind of multiverse adventure and there'd be a bunch of self-aware humor kind of poking fun at the the whole multiverse thing going on so I was thinking that Pony Fanboy and Powerpuff Fanboy would end up in the world of Equestria Girls because as I talked about in the last Media Wiz review I did for the year um, Equestria Girls didn't really go anywhere because it, it was ended very abruptly because Hasbro was wrapping up Friendship is Magic so they wanted to do away with Equestria Girls as soon as possible and also I think it would work better if they go to Equestria Girls world because um, you know Kim Possible, Teenage Robot, those shows have the whole high school element so I thought Equestria Girls would work perfectly if we were crossing over all these different worlds. So whereas they end up in the world of Equestria Girls, I was thinking Pony Fangirl and Powerpuff Fangirl would end up in Townsville. And then, uh, it was, I was thinking maybe Kim Possible Fanboy and Teenage Robot Fanboy end up in the world of Teenage Robot, while the Kim Possible Fangirl and Teenage Robot Fangirl end up in the world of Kim Possible. And basically you'd have it that uh, each of these fanboys and fangirls in these little groups, they would explain about the other dimensions, like their respective franchises, to each of the inhabitants of these worlds. You know, you have different scientist characters working on technology that was causing these rips in space and time. Like maybe Professor Utonium and uh, Jenny's mom were working on interdimensional travel. And so maybe that was part of it, as well as like maybe Dr. Draken was trying to come up with an interdimensional portal thing. So maybe that also caused it. And obviously in Equestria Girls, you have the whole uh, magic mirror that leads from uh, Equestria, where you know the world of ponies, and then they go to the world of humans and in, in the Equestria Girls world. So there's obviously a bunch of interdimensional traveling going on, and that explains why they ended up getting sucked into their own respective universes, and. As the fanboys and the fangirls talk about the other universes as if they're actually real, then you'd start to see the other worlds start to become interested in the existence of some of these other dimensions. Like, I was thinking maybe, like, Jenny would be interested in the Kim Possible world because the idea of, oh, there's another you know, teenage girl superhero that she could interact with and maybe befriend. And then. Um, the Powerpuffs are interested in the Equestria Girls world because, um, I was thinking Pony Fangirl would probably mention, like, that there are ponies, and obviously Bubbles would be really interested in that. Maybe even make a joke about, uh, you know, really bad uh, character assassination with, uh, Double Rainbow, and maybe there can be a joke in there about that. Since Human Twilight Sparkle, or Psy Twy, is interested in technology and, uh, scientific advances, I was thinking maybe she'd be interested in the Teenage Robot universe because there's like a bunch of science fiction stuff going on there. Uh, you know, the idea of fully cognizant robots running around, like maybe she would want to see a world where such scientific breakthroughs were going on. So maybe she's interested in that dimension. And then uh, Kim Possible, I was thinking 
like this this could be the reason why Draken's working on interdimensional travel. It could be that he's trying to find some kind of power source that could make him really powerful. And he caught wind about some other universe that has a very powerful chemical that could help him become super strong and develop super abilities. And that's obviously Chemical X. So maybe that's why he's trying to build interdimensional portals so he can go to Townsville so he can get Chemical X and he can become super powerful. Um, and that was the other thing. I was thinking maybe having the villains, they either kidnap the heroes or they kidnap the fanboys and the fangirls that have ended up in each of these dimensions. And the joke would be that the fanboys and fangirls drive them up the wall. <laughs> like, they're so annoyed by them. Um, I could easily imagine, like, uh, like Draken and Chigo would be perfect. I could imagine uh, the fangirls probably, like, annoy them, and then eventually it escalates to where they actually start to fight back, kind of like uh, Kim or Jenny would. Maybe Ron and Brad become friendly with each other because they're the, you know, they're the goofy uh, male best friend sidekick uh, to, to Jenny and Kim, so maybe that could be kind of funny. Um, I was thinking maybe... Maybe Ron is interested in the world of Equestria Girls because it's kind of similar to his whole, like, monkey ninjutsu magic powers. Like, maybe that has some connection, too. Maybe that's how Saitwai and some of the Equestria Girls characters end up going there. Like, maybe that's connected to that. Like, they think that, that he might have, like, pony magic, but then it turns out he has monkey magic instead. And when they get there, Sideswai can be like, this just opens up a, a whole other realm of possibilities of the world of science and magic. Um, and I was thinking maybe it could ultimately come together in the Equestria Girls universe. Like, whoever the main villain would be. Like, I, I think if we're going to go with the whole thing of Draken is the one responsible for creating this alternate dimension portal to begin with, Maybe it all comes together at the Equestria Girls universe, and then that's when the Equestria Girls, along with maybe the Powerpuffs and Kim and Jenny, maybe they all use some kind of, like, teamwork. There's all some kind of bond. Maybe what brings everything together in the Equestria Girls universe is Draken ends up realizing that there's something even more powerful than Chemical X, and that's uh, these magical gemstones that have equestrian magic, maybe that's it too. Maybe that's why it all ends up there. Maybe you can also hint at some other villains who are interested in this. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Like, maybe Mojo. Uh, maybe there can be the... I don't know, the, the cluster, maybe? I don't know. I feel like Teenage Robot doesn't really have a whole lot of major villains. The only ones that they really used regularly was the cluster and the space bikers. Um... Unless we just keep things simple and like, yeah, Draken can be the main villain and then you can have kind of like the the asshole villain characters like you got like the Crust Cousins and Bonnie and like maybe Princess. Like you can have those characters interacting. All the while, uh, these main characters get information from the fanboys and fangirls. Like they're telling them everything they need to know from all these other universes. And it's like, how do you know so much? Another thing to point out here is there would be a ton of jokes about the overusage of, like, multiverse stories going on. Like, South Park, I know, did that a while ago with their uh, Into the Panderverse special. But it, it is a thing that's being used a lot, so I think that maybe that could be kind of a funny joke. Especially considering that these are all shows on totally different networks owned by different companies, so that could be, like, a joke. Like, this is something they've never seen ever before, you know. You can have jokes about, like, maybe Powerpuff Girls have traveled to alternate universes, like, because of the, the Super Smash Up comics, um, and, like, Kim Possible has met up with Lilo and Stitch, and I don't think that, no, I don't think there was any major crossover with Teenage Robot, at, like, at all, aside from maybe some of the, like, more obscure ones, like those Jenny and Spongebob commercials. Yeah, you could definitely do jokes about, like, all these different worlds and all the similarities that they have that ultimately brings them together. All the while, the fanboys and fangirls help, and, you know, ultimately they end up going back home and they create some kind of special bond with uh, finally meeting their cartoon heroes. Uh, so that this is just a bunch of ideas that I've had for this. It's something that's been sitting on the back burner. I, have, I haven't really thought a whole lot about it, aside from a few ideas. Um, I just wanted to do this video as a way to throw some of these ideas out and see if anyone would be interested in seeing this actually come together as like some kind of special event video sometime in the future. Maybe the channel anniversary next year? I'm not entirely sure. Because um, I was thinking 
of doing it in a bunch of different formats. The one I'm thinking I, I want to do it in the most is probably as like an audio drama. Maybe we can do it that way. Um, I just think that this would be like such a bigger scale project compared to your average, you know, short pony fanboy planet goofball megacorp video. I feel like this would be like a little bit more of a, a daunting task. And another thing I was thinking about with this project was trying to get voice actors because I was thinking, you know, not just having it be me and my friend Kat who does the fangirl voices. I was thinking about trying to reach out to uh, online voice actors and seeing if they'd be interested in playing some of these other characters uh, from all these different shows and see if they can do good imitations. 2024 marks the 10th anniversary of the channel. So this is going to be a, a very interesting one. Uh, with a lot of the videos that I'm going to be doing, I want them to kind of connect to videos I've done years and years and years ago as a way to kind of reflect on all the years of content we've done. We're going to be revisiting some old franchises. I was thinking about maybe doing re-reviews on certain things. Um, not entirely sure which ones. Um, I definitely want to do more collaborations next year. I really want to collaborate with more people, some of my fellow content creators. Um, again, it, this all really depends on people's schedules, how busy we all are, if people are on board with doing it. Just like with last year, I'm going to try and put out a survey to ask people what they'd be interested in seeing with the channel moving forward into 2024. Uh, if people have any suggestions, any requests for videos. Um, I have a couple of requests jotted down and I have a bunch of other ideas for videos going on for next year. But um, yeah, it's just a way to kind of like get people's opinions moving forward. And I have a bunch of ideas of what I want to do. Um, I have a couple more unscripted freeform videos that usually fall under MC Swigga, even though they're not really. Um, but I have a couple more videos lined up for that. I want to do a few more Assholes React. Uh, maybe Bias News Network, but I feel like I haven't, I haven't done one of those since like February this year. So uh, we'll, we'll see if that eventually comes back sometime in 2024. I don't know. Maybe it will because of course election season's on the horizon. Joy. Um, but I only have a few more of those. Um, for the most part, like the main stuff for MC Swig is going to be staying, like the song parodies and the game reviews. Even though at some point I might eventually try to take a break from game reviews, but what's definitely not going away are the song parodies. That's that's definitely the main priority for MC Swig. Uh, Captivating Christian, I have a bunch of different movie and show reviews I want to do. I do have a, a VeggieTales retrospective in the works for that, because a bunch of stuff has happened to VeggieTales in the last few years. Uh, specifically, like... Uh, not just this year, but like the year before. So I want to do a, a kind of retrospective video. And uh, for the most part, I have a bunch of different ideas for Chris. A lot of typical bad movies. I have a few specifically Christian or political movies in the works. Like since there's an election year coming up, I did want to do a, another review on the campaign. Because I, I did a video on that years ago, but I think it would be more interesting to revisit it actually using like an actual proper script for the video as well as having Christy Ian and Peter Collins review it together because of course it's the perfect movie for that. As for Pony Fanboy, I'm not sure if I should review any more episodes from season three. I have one more idea for a, a season two review, but uh, I definitely want to move forward to season four. There's a couple of episodes I want to talk about with season four. There's a couple of other pony related things I want to do reviews for. There's this really dumb looking Sega Genesis game about ponies that I want to do a pony fanboy review on. I think that could be kind of interesting as a, you know, just something different, change of pace. Um, as well as some other stuff like maybe, maybe bring back some fan fiction videos here and there and um, just some different, maybe Equestria Girls reviews, maybe, see, if anyone's interested in that please let me know. And um, maybe some Pony Fanboy cooking videos, maybe that could come back. Blockbuster show, it's going to mostly be more bad movie reviews or like weird, bad, underrated kind of movie reviews. But also some different stuff along the way. I really do want to try and do more anime reviews along with like uh, comic reviews, game reviews, like just every once in a while to try and change things up. Uh, maybe some more convention videos. I do want to do more conventions at some point next year, so we'll see how that turns out. And MediaWiz, I have a bunch of different stuff. I was thinking about 
maybe doing collabs with people, but doing them in more of like a podcast format. That's what a lot of people are doing these days. I'm thinking if I'm going to do collabs with certain people, I want to do that. We're going to be revisiting a lot of different franchises. I have a bunch of different requests I've gotten throughout the years. I uh, have a bunch of different ideas for not just Media Wiz, but all these different series in general. But yeah, th this is just kind of a, an update video to let people know what's going on and what's, what's in store for coming up for 2024. And definitely wanted to lay out the groundworks for... Uh, this potential fanboy fangirl special that we got we got going on. I really want to see what people say about this. I really want to see if people have any ideas or suggestions for that. And um, if we do start writing it and we do start going forward with it, it's definitely going to be a project that we're going to be working on in the background while the rest of the main content is getting made. It's going to be something that I really want to put a lot of time and effort into. Maybe if anything, even if we don't do it as a full series of videos, maybe it can be like another fake trailer, kind of like we've done with some of the other anniversary videos throughout the years. Maybe we can do it that way. Um, but yeah, just wanted to throw some of these ideas out, let people know what we have coming up. Happy nine years of the channel, and uh, next year is the big one zero. It's going to be the 10th year of SAS Productions next year. Look forward to plenty of more content coming up. Can't wait for 10 years of SAS Productions next year. That's going to be interesting. And, uh, yeah, like I said earlier, have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year's coming up. And uh, that's pretty much it.